everybody. Welcome to another episode of What a Hell of a Way to Die. I got Tom here, Irish Tom. Um, hopefully uh, that, that nickname doesn't stick because it, it sounds racist already. Um, but I have Tom from uh, 33rd County and uh, from your tattoo podcast as well. Uh, Tom, what is, your, what is your tattoo podcast? Uh, it's called Beneath the Skin. Beneath the Skin. Uh, a good, if you, you should be doing some, uh, some historical tattoo work stuff. Uh, some good stuff there, but also as uh, as we said, also on Thirty Third County that he's been doing with Shocks, uh, our very own Shocks. And you know, I I was thinking uh, since I have access to a real live Irish person, why not bring them on and talk about Call of Fucking Duty, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, technically this was your idea, um, and and I just kind of went along with it. But uh, I have I have a very long history with uh, with Call of Duty, so um, I wanted to. I wanted to be a part of it. And also, like, I haven't played, apart from this, I haven't played Call of Duty, like a new Call of Duty game in probably a decade or so, I want to say. I played a lot of Call of Duty in Iraq in 2009 and 2010. And uh, and after that, I um, the game of choice after that was uh, depression and alcoholism um, for about 10 years. So I didn't really get to do a whole lot more call, uh, video gaming after that. But um, thank you, Tom, for bringing me back into the fold, dropping seventy seventy dollars, which uh, made me made me cringe a little bit. But I understand that these uh, these games are much more complicated and in depth, and you know they just spend so much money on writing. Um, obviously, because I recall so many things about this game, like the um, the one where you shoot from the airplane and the one where you're underwater. Um, Call of Duty games are very much like Mario games, right? Like the, you've got your water level, you've got your desert level you get your ice level in mario here it's just like all right you got to have your time that you're in a plane shooting down at people on the ground you got to have your like boating time you have to we have to show you how to use all of these bits and pieces that we've crammed on into the um uh into the multiplayer so that we can make sure that uh you know what the fuck you're doing um and and i proudly have never had any idea what i'm doing inside of an airplane in uh, Battlefield or Call of Duty or anything, so uh, constantly wrecking it and uh, ruining everybody's night, um, which is kind of my mo, honestly. So, so Tom, what's your what's your history with Call of Duty? Am um, I like I have a really long history with Call of Duty. Like I'm of the age where I entered teenage years when like Halo Three was out, when the original Call of Duty Four came out. And Let's say the I, original Call of Duty four, motherfucker. Original, yes. but four. Come on. Wait. How? So how? How old are you? You are. You're late. I'm 20s, 27. Right? Okay. So just so that everybody understands, when I talk about like I started with Call of Duty, I mean the one that was called Call of Duty in 2003. Um. So, but however, Modern Warfare really was like a because. Uh, the original World War II ones were fun. Um, Call of Duty 2 was probably the better, the best of the three. I remember the Call of Duty 3 just being absolutely terrible. And, and Modern Warfare really kind of put it on the map. So it's Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare is like Fallout 3, where it's just like, it's not the first, but it kind of is for a lot of people. So, but but continue. I'm, I'm interrupting you. Go ahead. Yeah, so I kind of jumped on the Call of Duty train, funnily enough, in... Because I didn't have internet until maybe like 2008, 2009. So multiplayer wasn't really a thing. And my family got this kind of high speed DSL connection. Uh, didn't even have broadband. And my brother had moved out at that stage. But he had bought Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. And had forgotten to bring it with him. And my parents had bought me an Xbox 360. And I was playing like Halo. And I was playing like a lot of, you know, custom games with my friends. And then I was moving my bookcase and suddenly this almost like a gift from the heavens, the copy, this copy of Modern Warfare 2 fell out. He obviously had just like thrown it on top of the bookcase and fell down and spent, I would say, probably about 10,000 hours over the course of like two years. I was a, a, a shut in teenager and played so much modern warfare 2 with my friends being called slurs by uh teenagers from all around the world really the true solidarity that we're all looking for the future international what kind of what kind of slurs do they throw at you like because i mean i know that you're irish because i have you know one i I've, I've been told that you're irish but i can tell by your accent um that you're not british you're not scottish you're not australian all all accents that are that 
you know, if you're a normal like Midwest hillbilly, you probably don't know the difference. But you know, but so what do do people were were they just like completely miss? Uh, uh, what 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 were you getting thrown at here? Because I've never been called a slur online. Um, um it, it it was mainly uh, homophobic slurs because I feel like at at that age you haven't really formed a kind of national prejudice against your neighbor. So the way Call of Duty matchmaking works is there are servers based in different continents and different regions within continents so traditionally in say like the original mw2 days you'd be playing with people from the uk people from western europe and obviously it, you, all you hear from like a polish kid is like kurva and uh being screamed at in like different languages and then you would have like the uh the british teens and occasionally american teenagers calling you homophobic slurs yeah, I just I um always go in and immediately mute everybody. Uh but that is not because I'm afraid of slurs. It's because most of the time there will be somebody who is like playing in I assume uh the the set of house party and there's just a massive amount of sounds or children crying or something. And like, you know, uh as a father, I would think you should probably do something about that. Um one, you could deal with your child. Two, just fucking mute yourself, man. Nobody wants to hear that. So I get, I just put all of it on mute. Um, my, I do no tactics with anybody. I used to do tactics with in Battlefield. Like you get the squad and you just kind of start, start talking and then other people would join in. And you'd be like, yeah, we're having a good time. We're doing, we're doing pretty well. And then the next one, you try to do that. And it, then it's uh, the next game is you're getting called a bunch of slurs or it's somebody who's, uh blasting i think offspring one time uh through their through, through their microphone so uh it's it's a real give and take and really uh feels feels completely unnecessary like a call of duty that is just completely muted the entire time i think would be um w- would probably be best but i feel i feel like that, that i feel like that's part of the culture though is that you know as time goes in cycles you know we're heading back into a recession modern warfare 2 is back we can now say slurs online thanks to elon musk you know we're really taking it back to 2008 we just need some hope now some barack obama resurgence of weird neoliberal optimism and then you know we've fully come full circle and i'm back to 14 yeah uh, that's why we're doing call of duty uh modern warfare 2 part 2 uh which the 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 algorithm the google algorithm hasn't really caught up to it yet so like when you do google call of duty modern warfare 2 the original one comes up uh above this one but i assume that it's going to uh it, this one's going to overtake so you started with two did you ever play the the first modern warfare yeah i i, I started playing with the first modern warfare because okay. like i said i didn't have an internet connection so i played uh call, the original call of duty modern warfare hundreds of times just because I had I had that and like pretty much nothing else. Yeah, and and looking back to it, like the things that you do in modern war, the original modern warfare, uh, some of the things that really stand out is the um, the one where you're going through the 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 exclusion zone um, in Pripyat. I don't know how to yeah, pronounce it. All, but it's you know, a, it's a called all gillied up. Yes, all gillied up when you're going through. Uh, you know, fifty thousand people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. Um, my my Alex Jones slash uh, Captain Price voice there uh it's got the the one where you the sniper uh mission and you shoot the guy's arm off and like all things that are um that, that aren't like shocking or new or anything now but at the time like this was really one of the first like first person shooters that that really kind of that that turned things on its head like I, I can't remember if call if the first modern warfare or the second modern warfare is the one where like your character just gets executed at some point and then you jump to another character, um, which which at the time I was really annoyed with because that that level took me like four or five times to get through. And then you're like, finally, I got through it. I got to the bottom of the hill. I'm going to get on the helicopter. And now somebody just domed me with the fucking Desert Eagle. Fantastic. That's Modern Warfare 2. OK, yeah. So um, Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2 had the no Russian uh, level which um, me and my friends in Iraq probably played way too many times. Uh, you know, it's look. You can enjoy things on a video game, and sometimes just like mowing down a bunch of pixels uh, is just really, you know, cathartic and and fun and very nice. So uh, it's okay. It's okay to to enjoy no Russian. Uh, but again, also just a very shocking kind of like, no, we need you to go in and just like murder the shit out of a bunch of civilians as 
part of a false flag operation kind of thing. So the games at the time were, were very, um, they're, they're very new. They're very different. They, they were something that like I, at the time don't ever remember having seen, you know, maybe there were other video games, you know, there, there's lots of other video games that, that tried to do or probably did, but modern warfare was the, the first one that did it on such a grand scale, I feel. So, um, and, and for myself, modern warfare two, and um, World at War were the games that we played in Iraq, just nonstop. Um, we didn't have internet well enough to do uh, to, to you know play anybody online, but we did set up like we had these big we call them T walls. And they're these giant um, like seventeen foot tall interlocking kind of concrete pillars. But pillars is wrong. They're not very wide, but they are very tall. Uh, and so you can interlock them. They're not very wide because you want to be you can turn them around, turn them and make curves and stuff in them. Uh, and the purpose of them is, you know, if we get rocketed or we get mortared, mortars explode upward. So it would, you know, block stuff in, in theory, uh, which what we did is we painted a big screen on it and got a projector and played a shitload of rust and, uh, a whole lot of world at war, uh, on the screen, just like, you know, the four or five of us, uh, drinking our prison wine that we were making under our beds and uh, and and playing uh, Call of Duty. So I've always had like good memories with this game, but uh, it really kind of so. And, and I didn't. Uh, I don't think I said this uh, on here, but um, I didn't play for like a decade after. I think Modern Warfare Three is the last game that I played until now. So uh, have you? Did you keep up with a lot of the the games that were in between? Uh, yeah, kind of. I played all of them, maybe up until like Infinite Warfare when it started to like go to space and stuff. And then I, it was kind of, I was at that age where I had like more interesting stuff to do. And now I think maybe in the past couple of years, I've had a bit more money and a bit more free time. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm, it's like six hours, eight hours. I'm going to play it. But, you know, I, I think um, you mentioned Rust and like, I think for anyone who played a lot of multiplayer, the original Mon- Modern Warfare 2, like just the, the battle cry of 1v1 me on Rust F word is, uh, is the, it is completely ingrained in any like Zoomer's brain. Uh, yeah, we had, um, we would set it so that it was, the win was 100 kills and then four of us playing Rust and just going completely, just absolute bonkers. Uh, let's see. So let's go. Let's. I have the list of Call of Duties of all the calls of all the duties that have been called. Um, so we'll go through. We'll go through some. Uh, the the original Call of Duty was uh really great. That's the one that's got like the Stalingrad um level where you uh you you it's the you, uh if you've seen uh Enemy at the Gate in the beginning the Red Army they're you know running. It's like you get the rifle, you get the bullets, and when the guy with the rifle dies, you pick up the rifle and you go you know. Go die yourself over there. Uh, so it's got that level in it. I played I played Call of Duty 2, um, as well as Big Red 1, which I think was the bigger one. Um, and then Call of Duty 3, again, don't really remember much of it. Uh, Modern Warfare comes out in 2007. So you played that. I played that. Did you play World at War? Oh, God, I played so much World at War. Okay. Yeah, every once in a while, Call of Duty dips back into the World War II thing, which I like. Um, I know that it's very, it's very difficult to just like constantly be like we want to we want to do all the gun porn that we can. So we want to have all these ridiculous guns that you can choose from. But yeah, there's only so much you can do. You can't like just come up with all the the, the, the cool guns that we have in 2002, back in 1944. Which is why I also think there's not really a Call of Duty, you know, World War One, because that would get People will get really frustrated with that really quick. Trench warfare, bring it back. Look, we're gonna get we're gonna get to some of the Call of Duty uh, titles that were um, suggested but haven't actually gone through. And there's one that's really good, and I'm very excited to talk about it. Uh, but let's keep going. Black Ops. I played Black Ops. I remember that one. Arguably, in my opinion, arguably the best Call of Duty game they ever made. I I do remember it being very good. And then that's the first one where they introduced the the zombies. Uh, no, they they had like um, Nocturne. No, they had Nazi zombies, didn't they? In World yeah, of War. it was just like I was. I think it was just like one mission, or maybe they did some like DLC. But like um, Black Ops is when they had like Kino Kino Duran Toten, which was like the game was like I played like hundreds of hours with my friends. 
And Black Ops was great because it took place in like the sixties and shit. Yeah, that's what that that's when you had a what do the numbers mean, Mason? <laughs> Alex Jones like queuing on stuff in like the sixties, just like incredible. Yeah, it was fantastic. And and you know what better than to have a game that says yes, absolutely, this did hap- this did happen. Now this is just the main series. We're gonna get into the, to the all the extra ones outside of this uh, eventually. Modern Warfare Three, uh, which. I did not remember. I know I played it. I don't remember much of it. And even like the the Wikipedia doesn't have. Oh, here's the plot. Yeah, it's still it's still all of our friends. It's soap. It's uh, Russian ultra nationalists. Like they're not just nationalists. They're ultra nationalists, um, which is some things never change. You know, it's it's I, I wonder what like if you're a national a Russian nationalist, you're really into Russia. If you're like an ultra nationalist, is it you're just like, I'm really into Russia, but like pre-1917. I need to bring that back the Romanovs. Bring back the czar. That that's what I'm saying. Make a make every food to have to be served with mayonnaise, you know, bring back proper Russia. Exactly. We we should all be, you know, dying of malnutrition more often. So uh Modern Warfare 3, I remember it not being very, you know, anything. I don't remember anything about it. Uh, Cod Blops 2. Don't remember this one either. I don't think that I played this one. I what played it. It, it was it was okay. Like, it, it wasn't really a scratch on the first one, but, you know, it was okay. Yeah. And, you know, again, it's just a lot of... The, every game is the same. It's The plot line doesn't matter. It's, you know, we're just putting you in different situations to do different things. Like even, even this current modern warfare is just like, we're going to end it on a cliffhanger. It's like, I don't give a fuck. Like who, who oh, I'm not, I, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody, but there is a, a cliffhanger at the end. And it's like, you know, you're going to make another game and charge me $70 for it in a two and a half years or so. And it's going to be all the same stuff. And like a hog, I will probably buy it. But, uh, cause I have, I have more time and more money now. Um, and so I'm reverting back to my the things that I did when I was a teenager, which was uh, waste time with video games. I uh, Call of Duty Ghosts did not play that one. Absolutely fucking shit. Terrible game. Really? I got it. I, I had gotten a PS4 uh, that year and played it. And I think it was like one of the first PS4 games I played. And it was absolute dog shit. Like once again, like I think. We'll come back to this, but like one of those stories where it's like, this is just like absolute C tier, like Tom Clancy wannabe novel. Like, oh, he- this person is going to betray me. I did not see that coming. Just like, and even the action wasn't even that good. You know, it's like going to see a shit Michael Bay movie. Yeah. Um, it, and this one kind of had that same, uh, that, that same feel, but you know, I know people aren't buying this for the, uh, for, for the, the main series, but I do always feel like you gotta, you gotta at least go through it once. Um, you gotta, you gotta experience what they're, you gotta pick up what they're trying to put down sometimes, you know? Yeah, exactly. All right. Um, advanced warfare. I did not play this one. I also played this one. This was, I think this was the last one I played for a couple of years. Just like once again, boring, forgettable. Um, I think this is when they went to space. Um, and I had like, kit harrington from game of thrones in it this is kind of like their turn when they start like adding in celebrity actors i I can't remember which one famously has kevin spacey a decision i'm sure they don't regret at all (laughs) um as like the as the main antagonist yeah this is where it starts getting i think it's both at this time both call of duty and halo kind of were trying to reinvent themselves too much as games rather than stick with what they already know this i think around this time is when halo 4 came out and funnily enough only a couple of months ago because i didn't have a console for a couple of years and i bought one of the xbox series s i i moved back home with my parents for like two months before i moved to the uk and i was like i'm working from home i have loads of downtime i'm just gonna buy a cheap secondhand xbox series s and like play through all of the halo games and yeah this was kind of like a time when call of duty was trying to be halo halo didn't really know what it was doing and there was like more interesting kind of shooters out there so it was kind of like call of duty didn't know what it was doing halo didn't know what it was doing and everyone else was kind of in the middle 2014 is when advanced warfare comes out and i remember this because uh that's the year that titanfall came out and titanfall was one of my absolute favorite first-person shoes. Still is. Titanfall 2, 
I play, I, I jump in on that uh, on the Xbox every once in a while. For some reason, I don't know what it is, but like that Twitch gaming fucking works for me. Like all this, I, you know, I play Call of Duty. It's fine. I play the online stuff. It's fine. But like for some reason, Titanfall, it's just, it's so fast and so quick. And for some reason that appeals to my brain somehow. So, you know, when advanced warfare, cause I know advanced warfare, one of the big things was like, look, now we have like rocket packs so you can double jump, which, which Titanfall was doing too, but like kind of on its own, like Titanfall came out of, was just like, no, we're not, we're a new series. There's nothing, there's nothing uh, previous about us. Um, it's, and if you don't know Titanfall, you play as what are called pilots. And then as you play the game, uh, and when Titanfall came out, only multiplayer. There's no single player whatsoever. It was 40 bucks, multiplayer only. It was kind of a risk. Um, and they brought out Titanfall 2 a couple years later, and they did put a, uh, a single player in, which was fine. Uh, but I loved the first one. It had uh, the double jumps because you had the, th- the the backpacks there. But also after a certain amount of time or a certain amount of uh, kills that you got, uh, you would get to call in the Titan. And the Titan was this big like robot that you jump down. It's it's a it's a Gundam basically. You get to do Gundam fights. Um, and the great as someone who has a fucking big ass Evangelion tattoo, I love Titanfall. I love a uh, you know where you can play as a dude inside a giant robot. And and you know the great thing about it was that the robots were balanced too. Like you could uh, you could get on top and rodeo one and like drop a bomb inside of it. Uh, the there are all kinds of different loadouts for the Titans and everything. It's just fantastic, fantastic idea. Very well executed. I wish that Titanfall was bigger. Um, I don't know if they're going to do another one anytime soon. Respawn is, uh, funnily enough, just like a bit of lore for anyone who has been into the Call of Duty series for a long time. Um, the original creators of Call of Duty Modern Warfare, who were the lead developers for Infinity Ward, I think it was Vince Ampella and I can't remember the other guy's name. I know his name is his surname is West. They left and formed Respawn and they were lead developers on Titanfall. So like they were the guys who were like, okay, this is going to be our new thing. And it really shows with the fact that, you know, Titanfall was like really enjoyable and really innovative. And then suddenly, which we'll see with the next Call of Duty game, they just w- tried to do that. So, um, Advanced Warfare, we've got uh, Cod Blops 3, didn't play it, um, in 2016, Inf- Infinite Warfare, and I think that's the one that you're, that you're referring to, right? Where they're just trying to rip off Titanfall? Yeah, I, if, as far as I can remember, I think that's the one with Kit Harrington in it and Kevin Spacey, not the Advanced Warfare. Yeah, just like, once again, Call of Duty th- trying to be a better game that came out recently um in the previous year and i think this is also kind of says a lot about at this time like call of duty came out every year so you had essentially treyarch producing one game and then infinity ward producing the next game and like when you have two years to make a game the the scale of a call of duty obviously it's going to be fucking dog shit after a while right and it seems so it seems like they uh they for a while, they've just been swapping back and forth between Infinity Ward, Sledgehammer, and Treyarch uh, slash Raven Software. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. Yeah, after, after uh, 2012, it's like they, there's three developers and they all just like tag in. Um, it's like, we're going to take three years to develop this, but that way somebody is always releasing something. Somebody's always milking the, uh, the gamer teat uh, in one way or another. The gamer hogs are uh, hungry for slop. Exactly. Um, so then we have uh, a, a back to um, a return to form Call of Duty World War II. I don't think I played this one. I I, I don't think I played. I didn't play this either. This had the Nazi zombies in it, and that sounds kind of familiar. But I don't know. I'd have to go back and and really like and and watch some of it to see if I see if it's something that I I ever played. Because uh, I do like the World War II ones. Um, I don't know why, because um, I know they're not, you know, historically accurate or anything. But there, there's just something about shooting Nazis that just feels real good. So, um, really big uh, fan of that. The last ever unproblematic war, <laughs> where America was good and did nothing bad, and uh, never, never did anything bad after that either. Yeah, as I'm going oh, to yeah. talk, as I'm going to talk about when we talk about the current one, don't look up Operation Gladio or Operation Condor <laughs> at all. <laughs> 
<laughs> or Operation Paperclip or, you know, any, any, if it starts with Operation, it's probably going to end bad for everybody. Don't Google Werner Von Braun. All right. So we've got Blops 4. Uh, seems like it didn't really. I think I played this on like one of those, you know, you pay for like Game Pass or PlayStation Plus and you get it for free. I think I played it for maybe like half an hour and I was like, this fucking sucks. Fuck this. Uh, then we've got Call of Duty Modern Warfare Part 2, where they modern modernized Modern Warfare again. Uh, I think that this was the one... This was one that, like, when it was announced, I rolled my eyes and understood, like, what was coming. And it was basically, hey, we're going to repackage all of the bullshit that you were really into, but update the graphics and sell it to you for an upcharge. And, like, you know, my fucking brain was just like, yes, feed me the slop. Put it all into here. Give it all to me. Pretty much like, what if Black Rifle Coffee Company made a game? Right. But they didn't put any of the cool stuff in. Like, if they if they were like, hey, we're just going to remake Modern Warfare so you can go, like, run around the exclusion zone again. But this time, you know, we've upped the... We, we've given you more pixels to look at. Like, fine. That's that's good for me. And But it's no, it's another one where they got to go to Urzikstan. Um, the made the made up former Soviet satellites uh, country that everything bad happens in. Never, never, you know, a place that actually exists. Sometimes it's Russia, but it always comes back to Urzikstan. Well, when when we talk about the the new game, it, it does involve a real place uh, somewhere that the U.S. has been hungry and desperately wanting to start a war with for probably about fifty years at this stage. But yeah, like that one. That one really, like, if we're going to talk about the politics of these games like call of duty has never really had a consistent politics it's like the first two modern warfare three modern warfare games they were really kind of like michael bay movies big bombast you know ura the military is great let's kind of like a movie whereas i feel like uh, call of duty modern warfare in 2019 really try to strike some sort of level of realism and gritty realism that like i think as culture has moved on and a lot of people have you know questioned uh wars not just the us's involvement but like the british involvement and kind of just war in general they have to kind of lean a little bit more on the clandestine level of it and it leads to like some really weird moral places like i remember playing it when it came out and i was like this is fucking weird. Like, why am I doing a quick time event to one pay press F to pay respects, but also why am I pressing F to torture someone's family? I believe wasn't there also a there was uh, there was a torture scene in one of the original, like either Modern Warfare or Modern Warfare Two, where you take somebody captive and then Price is just like beating the shit out of them. Um, I will reminder to all of you who do love these games and think like, oh, well, you know, it's fine because they're bad guys. Technically a war crime. It's always a war crime. Every time it's a war crime, guys. I mean, pretty much everything that has been done in the past two Modern Warfare games is pretty much a war crime. Like, you know, uh, pushing in the previous Modern Warfare, pushing a civilian who has a bomb vest strapped to him over a balcony because uh, you ran out of time to disarm it. I feel like that, like, kind of, I, f I feel like there's something in the Geneva Convention about that. That was in a movie, though. That was in, uh, fuck, what was the name of that? Uh, the Hurt Locker. Um, oh, there was yeah. A scene. Yeah, I remember there's that scene in The Hurt Locker where he's trying to, you know, take the bomb vest off and he can't get it, so he has to run and let the guy blow up. Like, I mean, look, that's not a war crime. That's that's understandable, but, like, all the other stuff. Um, and speaking of war crimes, let's get to the next one. Uh, Call of Duty Blops Cold War, uh, where we get Ronnie Reagan. A man who, a, a man who has a completely unproblematic political history for one a big fan of his uh, economic policies i really do think uh money trickles down and you know i do think you know we have to worry about uh, certain members of our community and broken windows yep and uh and and all those homosexuals getting uh diseases isn't his problem yeah no that's their that's their that's their problem you know um anyone who contracts you know a disease through a uh, cons consensual intercourse well that's their problem uh, god should have uh, protected them Simply stop having sex. Um, certainly a thing. And you know, when, when I saw... Well, it, Francis, stop having sex unless you're a white person, middle class, and have a stable income in the middle of America and vote Republican. Then, then fuck as much as you want. 
I, I, I didn't. Add, I, I think I've already know this, the answer to this. But you're Irish Catholic, right? Oh yeah. Okay, so like we already know about um, don't fuck. Uh, otherwise, bad things will happen. So. <laughs> Or incredible things will happen. You can uh, raise 11 children, send uh, seven of them across the continent and send them to the US to uh, start new lives and hopefully end up making either uh, shitty movies or having extremely shitty kids and create a political dynasty. Oh, this is the Kennedys. I thought you were talking about yourself. Oh, no. The Ken- Funnily enough, the Kennedys actually came from the same town that I'm from in Ireland. Oh, well, well what happened to you then? Why, why don't you have a political dynasty? Because uh, my family were like uh, muck farmers for you know 700 years the the kennedys got on a coffin ship and funnily enough there's a giant arboretum that is uh, named after jfk uh, there's a statue to jfk um the host of air equivalent of like the tonight show absolutely loves jfk and has written like three books about him um it's a, a lot of weird connections List, listen to 33rd county subscribe to the patreon and listen to 33rd County, and I go in depth about uh, Ryan Tuberty's weird fascination with the Kennedys. Yeah, Tom also goes uh, deep into the weird Irish fascination of country music, too. Which, like, after you explained it, made perfect sense. Um, it, and for all the people who say that there is no, uh, America has no culture, um, country music is popular literally everywhere. Like, Garth Brooks uh, had the most notable concert and the most notable event to ever happen on the 11th of September recently in Dublin. So, you know, <laughs> um, we can forget about everything else that has happened on every previous 11th of September. Yeah, there's nothing else to remember. All right, so 2021, we've got Call of Duty Vanguard. I don't know anything about this one. No, uh, I th- is it? I think this is like, uh, I think that's back to World War II again. Um, is it? Yeah, it is. 1945. Okay. Maybe yeah, maybe I'll play that one. Maybe I'll go. I'll dip back in and play a little bit of uh, a little bit of that. Another zombies one. They they always they always cramming in zombies on these uh, World War Two ones. But I guess uh, Nazi zombies is even better to to mow down and kill. And then okay, and then we have Modern Warfare Two. Now hold on because we're not done talking about Call of Duty games. Um, because there's the, the let's see the flops. What do we got? Okay, other games. Call of Duty Finest Hour, which was the first like uh, a GameCube version of Call of Duty. Um, Big Red One, which I mentioned, uh, uh, that one was a lot of fun. Uh, the War Collection, a box set compilation of Call of Duty Three, Four, and World at War, which you could get um on the 360. Uh, World at War. Final Fronts, which was a little bit of an add-on where you could play the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, handheld titles, the PSP, the Roads to Victory. Uh, Nintendo DS had Modern Warfare Mobilize, Black Ops DS, and Black Ops Declassified. Uh, sadly, no uh, no Switch games for Call of Duty yet. We'll you know keep, keep holding out for that. Um, PC-only titles, Call of Duty Online, Call of Duty Warzone, uh, some more mobile titles. Um, let's get to the canceled titles, though, because these, the, these are the good ones. We have Call of Duty Combined Forces, uh, which was a sequel to Final Hour. Um, due to multiple legal issues, the whole thing got shuttered. We've got Call of Duty Devil's Brigade, uh, which was going to be set in World War II during the Italian campaign. Call of Duty Vietnam, which I don't... There's there's not been a good Vietnam game, and I don't think you can make a good one because nobody feels good about Vietnam. Yeah, like I, even like from a conceptual level, I I don't know how you can really make Vietnam an enjoyable, if we can call it an enjoyable gaming experience. You know, just make a forest simulator and just like walk through that and just like play Fortunate Son over and over again. I feel like you'll get the gist. Yeah, I do Call of Duty, um, Korean Warfare, press F to uh, kill 20% of the population. And then we've got my favorite, Call of Duty Roman Wars, um, a canceled game to be set in ancient Rome to allow players to control famous historical figures like Julius Caesar, along with some low grunts and officers of the 10th Legion. Uh, they, Activision had uncertainties about branding this a Call of Duty title, which, yeah, because, like, literally gunpowder doesn't exist, so... I mean, like, there, this is a game targeted at one exact person, and that one exact person is Joe Kasabian. Yeah. <laughs> no, that would be Call of Duty, um, Napoleonic Wars. <laughs> you know, d- just, you know, controlling Napoleon and, uh, and getting your ass just handed to you in Waterloo. Uh, so... 
so that's that's Call of Duty. And then there's other things. There's there are apparently a couple of films. There's comic books. Uh, there's just a lot of a lot going on. They have an endowment. Um, the Call of Duty Endowment is a nonprofit foundation created by Activision Blizzard to find employment for military veterans. Um, it probably in fucking Blackwater, I assume. After playing this fucking game. <laughs> well, I mean, like we're gonna we're gonna talk about PMCs very soon, but like, yeah, let's let's do that. Let's let's talk about Modern War Warfare Two, two thousand and two. Well, right before we do that, I want to talk about like the weird kind of like gamer culture thing in the like early to 2010s around like Call of Duty when they ha- were like having what we would think of like Comic Con now where they would have these big conferences called Call of Duty XP where there was this whole like media fanfare about the announcement. You can go like select people. And this was kind of before influencers really existed. So it was like big YouTubers and stuff would go and play the multiplayer. You could win like a call of duty branded jeep and shit like that you know <laughs> like i i remember i solidly remember i think it was call of duty 2 or call of duty 3 i think it was 2 where if you got like the uh the like deluxe deluxe edition you could get night vision goggles and i remember thinking like oh my fucking god i want to buy this and i want to get night vision goggles so i can run around in because i like grew up in a forest like run around in the dark and not worry about getting kidnapped or shit do you think that like the existence of night vision goggles is going to stop somebody from kidnapping you also do you get are there a lot of kidnappings in ireland in the woods i assume that's just like a i assume it's like an irish fairy or something Eh, not really like ever since like the catholic church has been scaled back i'm sure the numbers have dropped quite a lot but you know, you can you can never really be too careful. Also, funny enough, like those uh, ever since, like I remember listening to um, I can't remember what show it was, but I listened to a podcast where they talked about the whole development of those like uh, night vision goggles and how they were just like the most dog shit thing ever. That like obviously, if you're paying like seventy like seventy quid for a game and then like thirty pounds on top of it you're going to get night vision goggles. Like Blackwater must be like absolutely rolling in it. If uh, they can kit out their night vision goggles for 30 pounds. No, that sound sounds like it's absolutely going to work and not uh, probably give you eye cancer. I would assume. I mean, my glasses are so fucked that I probably already have it. And I've spent so much time playing call of duty. I definitely already have eye cancer. All right. So um, let's, let's go through, let's, let's go through some of the missions here. So, uh, call of duty to 2000. I'm just going to call it modern warfare to understand that I'm talking about 2002 one. Thank you. Treyarch and infinity board for making a fucking confusing naming convention, whatever. All right. So, uh, and, and the single player released before the multiplayer. So everybody could, uh, everybody could really spend some time with this single player. Like, I don't really know why they're like, yeah, let's release this a week and a half early so that everybody can really like make fun of the insane shit that we're doing here. Maybe it was to cause buzz. Certainly people were tweeting about it. So, uh, good job on that, I guess. Cause like, this is like one of the fastest selling titles of my, of call of duty history. So, um, and, and you know what, for good reason, it's, it's not a bad game. Uh, I've only played probably, I've only been able to drop like a couple of hours into multiplayer, but I'm enjoying it. Um, the, the, some of the missions were really irritating. Um, and maybe I had to drop it down to, uh, the novice level to get through a couple of things, but it was at least different. So, um, some of them, but so let's start out with our first mission strike. Uh, which is you get to missile assassinate a fucking, uh, uh, a guy basically um and and a lot of people were were comparing it to the assassination of uh oh fuck what's his name comparing it to the the assassination of Sulanami. um i still said it wrong it doesn't matter um you know and and it is basically you get to fire a, a connex rocket at a guy and um i fucked it up my first time i blew up i i hit i hit too early and uh and didn't make it so i had to go back and, and redo it and you know do the missile better this time um, how did you feel about this? You know, kind of kind of jumping into this. I mean, like as an opener, I, I feel like they kind of went for a bit of shock factor. I also felt it was like maybe a little bit shoved in and it felt quite like, did you see the late, the um, sequel, the Top Gun that came out this year? The it kind of weirdly felt like the whole final mission set up for Top Gun um, Maverick. But yeah, like it was, it was weird. You know, I kind of, I was sitting and I was playing it and like the 
bomb blew, the missile blew up. My girlfriend just looked at me. He's like, why do you enjoy playing these games? This level, like it, it, this is not why I like playing these games. This was a stupid level. Uh, and like you said, it was completely for shock value. There's no reason to do this other than wouldn't it be cool if you could, uh, missile assassinate a guy. And I mean, sure, I guess, but in general though, it's just not a very, it, there, there's nothing um, satisfactory about it. Uh, there is, you know, you don't you don't really get to to do the thing that you want to do, which is shoot a gun. Uh, you get to climb. You get to learn how to like. Once again, you gotta look left, look right. God, my 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 fucking heart for a game, a first person shooter that's just like you know how to fucking move, dude. Just move. Don't. It's two controllers. It's the same thing that we've always been doing. You hit A to jump. You look left and right with this one. You go forward with that one. You're not stupid. Let's move forward. Also, like literally the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare, like completely redefined what co- controller settings were in first person shooters. Like you play any first person shooter now, it is literally using Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare's layout. Yes, uh, which is which is great. It's a great layout um, and it's been drilled into my head. I can't imagine anybody like and hey, you know what? Maybe there are. I'm sure there are. but. It's hard for me to imagine that there are people who are just like, time for me to learn about what this Call of Duty is all about and then pick up fucking Modern Warfare 2 in the year 2002. Uh, unless they're like maybe 10, maybe. Because I know plenty of kids probably started playing back then. Uh, so we go through Strike, you blow up a guy. Fine, whatever. Now we get to go and do some actual like fun, sneaky, sneaky stuff uh, with Killer Capture which is uh, advancing on a building, shooting snipers. You're advancing on multiple buildings looking for uh, Hassan. Hassan being the generic Arabic sounding name that we can make every bad guy be. He's a, a member. He's a, like a leader in Al-Quds, which is the Iranian terror organization. Um, dep- dep- depends on which report you're reading. But Al-Quds is uh, Iranian aligned. Um, and you get to do you get to do the thing you get to run, run through you get to shoot the guns your gun my gun runs out of ammo because I'm a terrible fucking shot so you get to pick up like guns that are just around and that's all fun uh, and you get to do the you you get to play some fucking modern warfare and it's not there's nothing you know surprising about this there's nothing new or different you're just doing what you do uh, which hey it was it was a ni- it was a nice like um, reintroduction to the series for me so how did you feel about killer capture? Uh, I immediately felt like Call of Duty has run out of ideas and it is now trying to <laughs> rehash better games. This is something I'm going to say constantly as we go through the missions. Like, it really feels like, you know, oh, there's a little bit of Black Hawk Down, which, you know, they did in both Call of Duty Modern Warfare 1 and 2, the original ones. It feels like a little bit of the... um. Oh, the storming of the Capitol building, I think, in Modern Warfare 2. You know, I don't know. It like it was fun. You know, it was cool. The night vision section was cool, but like that's about it. You know, this is kind of going to be my general feeling about this entire game. But yeah, there wasn't anything that really kind of stood out to me as um, memorable. Uh, the next one is wet work. I guess I remember. I'm, you know, and and there's probably like I said, I haven't played these games in about a decade. So a lot of the things that I'm just like, Oh, that was cool. It's probably been done in other games. Um, I don't remember this like kind of under in wet work where you're doing the underwater and you have to go and like kill all these dudes that are standing on the dock and shit, uh, which is fine. Um, you spend like 15 minutes, uh, killing Dutch boot polish importers. You know, you're, you're really supporting the cause. Yeah. It's just a bunch of guys smoking on a dock trying to, uh, you know, Dude, just trying to make it, man. Just trying to make it in this day. And then all of a sudden, some fucking British guy comes out of the water and ganks him. Uh, this is also the one. Uh, let's see. No, Tradecraft, I think, is where. Is that the one? Yeah. So we're in the streets of Amsterdam. Uh, and you get to do some subterfuge. You get to uh, meet Laswell, who I can't remember if Laswell was in. I don't know if she was in the other episode. Yeah, uh, she, she was in the, the last Call of Duty game. She wasn't in the original Modern Warfare's. Right. And I know that they, they have like um, rehashed some characters. There's Soap, there's Price. Uh, who uh, Gaz, I think Gaz was in some of them. Yeah, and- Ghost as well. But like, it, it's funny, like, L- Laswell really feels like, you know, that tweet about, oh, what if, you know, the drone operator was a woman? Right. You're just like, look, no, 
we're we're um we're being more um progressive we have a woman who is also very dangerous but also we're gonna make her get kidnapped and you guys have to save her at some point um because we still because we're still gonna play on the the uh, emotions of this woman has been kidnapped and we we men must protect her but then you get to see the cool like she falls out of the van like after you catch up with her and she's like choking the guy out and killing him uh yeah, herself. Exactly. so it's it's nice you know women women too can do war crimes uh as it turns out we love female okay, so, war criminals exactly more more female war criminals um this the uh the trade crafts uh amsterdam shootout level was meh to me i didn't really i didn't care for it i didn't give a shit about it and i just was doing what i could to get through it so i could get to the next thing um which was borderline where we get to meet the mexican special forces and this this is when, for me, shit starts to get weird in this game. Yeah, yeah. Like the, uh, so like the whole setup for this mission is you're chasing Hassan as he's being smuggled th- up to the U.S. Mexico border, and then he escapes you and escapes over the border wall, and then these uh, Mexican special forces are like, "Oh well, we can't chase him over the wall. We don't have jurisdiction," and they're just like, "To hell with." protocol and like get over the wall and are like chasing them through what looks like a trailer park and like they're going through people's homes and like civilians are like shouting at them to get out of their house and you have to point your gun at civilians to de-escalate them which i'm sure really really works you know hold hold left trigger to de-escalate and it's just i'm de-escalating by threatening to dome you right now and that is not a de-escalation which actually we learn because you do that at a certain point and somebody pulls a shotgun off the wall and you got to kill him, which like, I shouldn't have to do that. That's, that's murder. Again, no jurisdiction. Alejandro has no jurisdiction here. He broke into somebody's house and then killed him when he tried to defend himself. So as an American and as a true believer in castle law, uh, Alejandro needs to be uh, sent up to the Hague. Personally, <laughs> him, him, and his massive five head. Uh, I have never seen. I have never seen a receding hairline that looks so good on a man. Uh, where like he's just got that that really nice, like huge, thick hair uh, that's really well done up, but like it's also th- it's way too far away from his face. Uh, so, you know, shout out to whoever uh, whoever managed to, to to design that man. Um, I think you didn't you say that uh somebody said that he was the most spanish looking guy oh available? yeah yeah, he's the most latin looking guy on the planet like i think you know alejandro has a place in the hearts of every uh, man in his mid-30s who is balding who has picked up this game in the past like two weeks you know they're thinking like he just like me for real and like doing the leonardo dicaprio point at the screen yeah, it's, he's a he's a guy who's like in his you know probably late thirties, maybe early forties. He's a colonel, so he's got he has to have been around for a while. Uh, he's really good with a gun, but also he's going bald. Um, we don't hear anything about the divorce that he uh, that he's going through with his bitch of an ex wife, but I assume it's there. Yeah, you know, like it it, it is a hundred percent there. That's why he's so willing to chase him over the border. Is he owes so much in alimony? You know, back alimony that like <laughs> I can't imagine being a Colonel in a like clandestine, you know, Mexican special forces really pays that much. So, you know, he's got to be in court next week. You know, he wants all this stuff tied up so he can, you know, get back to his like uh, row house, you know, and just kind of like chill out before he has to go, you know, argue with a judge. Yeah, I just imagine him just be like, look, man, I can't go over the border wall. I'm on probation. All right. I, if I if I get picked up one more time, dude, the, somebody's going to the, the judge is going to put me up for five years. Hey, cabron, I cannot um, go over the wall. My ankle monitor will go off. <laughs> yeah, the GPS that the uh, the judge said that I had to embed in my in my body is, is going to just go all kinds of crazy. In re- in in real in reality, his ex wife actually lives in that trailer park, so he's tr- he's actually going over the wall to get his Xbox back. Yeah, yeah. the uh, the new boyfriend is the guy who pulled the the shotgun off of the uh, off of the thing. That's all made up. It didn't actually happen. Alejandro was just like, "Hey, while I'm here, I'm just gonna go ahead and fucking murder this guy and uh, keep on my, you know, um, mad mad props to him too. You know what? He's just trying to get his kid back. All right, so." After that, we go to cartel protection. We get to do some more Alejandro. 
um, some running through. This is uh, having to fight the Mexican army uh, and running through the hills of Mexico, I believe. Like they went over the border and then they came back to Mexico and were looking for because they were looking for the cartels that were working with Hassan because Hassan and the cartels were in bed together. Of course, why wouldn't they be? Yeah, this this makes total sense, you know. But also, like, this mission is just, like, a blatant ripoff of the favela mission in, like, Modern Warfare 2. Like, arguably a much better mission. Yeah, the favela mission, you're, like, running across rooftops, and uh, it's it's very hectic, and there's a lot of uh, civilians and, and everything, and it's it does have that, it does have more of a frantic feel to it. Um, but this is just, what if we were in the middle of nowhere and had to kill a bunch of uh, Mexican army people who were like, we have to make sure that we tell you that they are in bed with the cartels, and therefore it's okay that we shoot them. Exactly. All right, so you got you get through the cliffs, uh, you get down to the bridge, you uh, kill some more Mexican um, guys, uh, more Mexican soldiers, and uh, and you win and move on to the next thing, um, which is where we uh, where we get to meet the PMC. Uh, God, God, fucking bless this guy. Um, so close yeah, air, the seventh Philip, mission. Philip Graves, if you can guess the pun, his name is Phil Graves, <laughs> which the most camp uh, drug lord, uh, which we'll meet in like a couple of missions, like points out, it's like, oh, it's a funny name. Yeah, just in case you didn't get it. Yeah. He's, he's there to be like, oh, Phil Graves, I get it. And to be fair, I didn't get it until he he pointed it out, and I was like, "Oh, okay, that's 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 clever." I yeah. Guess. So like the the this like PMC group has been like hired by the is it a general? I I don't know military rank. I'm on the wrong show. Yeah. So it's a, a PMC uh, is a private military contractor, which uh, for some reason we allow like civilians to own massive amounts of weaponry and we just hire them out as mercenaries oh i know i know that and, i it was more so shepherd I, I can't remember what rank shepherd was oh yeah shepherd's a general i'm explaining for the general audience just oh, in okay. case uh in case they're not they're not understanding this this portion because like graves and, and and i like graves from the beginning um because he sounds like a used car salesman and i know that i'm supposed to and i was just like that guy look there's gonna be spoilers in this so if you really haven't played the first, if you haven't played this, you know, the single player and you're really not wanting to be spoiled, stop listening uh, and then finish up the thing. But so that guy was obviously going to betray everybody, like just because he has that smarmy kind of attitude, which, though, I was a little surprised by because it seemed like they were trying to be like, look, PMCs are a good idea and we like them and everybody should have a PMC. Uh, and then they turn the PMC into the bad guys. Welcome to Watch Mojo's 10 Greatest Anime Betrayals. <laughs> yeah uh and and shepherd betraying you i think that's happened before not with shepherd but like a general just betraying yeah you i think i think it know. is i think the general that betrays you in modern warfare 2 is also general shepherd but funnily enough that in this game they made him like old kind of fat and bald where he looks like tom Selleck in the original modern warfare 2 well, uh, I don't know why we're trusting him again all of a sudden, but uh, it, it, it seems like the thing that we're going to do with uh, with Shepard. But this is um, I enjoyed this because I always enjoy the, uh, the the flight section where you get to, you know, shoot people on the ground from a C-130. Uh, or if it's a World War Two game, you get to get into the uh, into the uh, ball turrets or the back turrets and shoot Nazis down that way. Yeah, weirdly enough, like in because. There is famously a AC-130 section in, I think, Modern Warfare 1, the original one? Yes, there, there's there's something in one of them. Uh, there was the AC-130. Yeah, but in this one, um, you get like rules of engagement. So you're like, oh, don't shoot the buildings, don't shoot the civilians. Whereas in the original one, it's like literally shoot anything that doesn't have a flashing bulb on it. Yeah. And and I got I'm going to tell you um PMCs do not generally give a shit about uh rules of engagement. They are they are not military, so they can actually do war crimes and it's not technically a war crime because they're, you know, normal people. However, that does mean that the, Gen the Geneva Convention doesn't apply to them, so you can torture the shit out of them if you want. But also like in the previous Modern Warfare in 2019, like the whole thing is about oh, we need to take the gloves off. We need to get rid of the rules of engagement and then 
you know, oh, the people who don't use the rules of engagement suddenly, like, in the end, they're the bad guy. I, the weird, like, difficulty spikes in this game and, like, weird just sections where it's, like, unnecessarily and arbitrarily, like, uh, complicated. Like, it could have just been as easy for them to, like, just not put civilians in this section, but they put civilians in the section and, like, ha- you have to, like, restart it, like, a couple of times. There's also, like, a section later on that I had to start, like, maybe about 20 times because I got locked in a progress loop. I almost had that problem uh, a few times myself. We'll, we'll keep going there, but um, it does seem like they're trying to, uh, to make the PMCs uh, look really good and like a good idea. And I don't, well, I mean, I understand why they, you know, this is all supposed to be kind of like, you know, clandestine. So you can't use the actual military because that involves paperwork. So you, hire a guy but i mean i imagine that the the millions of dollars that you have to funnel to him also requires paperwork so but we're not going to get into specifics and things like that um we'll we'll just go crazy trying to trying to figure ourselves out that way so but you know for myself big fan uh of this one just because i love to shoot bombs at people from the sky uh it's just one of my favorite things to do in, in call of duty all right so and then then we've got hard point, which is the next one. Uh, we're still shooting stuff from the sky. Uh, again, doesn't really, there's not much to it. There's, uh, you know, some vehicles come in, there's RPGs. Uh, this is one of the, and, and this is one of the few times that I remember having to worry about being fired upon in the C one hundred and thirty because, uh, there's anti air that you also have to take out you get flares, you can shoot them off and everything. But like, if you don't take out the anti air, too many of them will be coming and then you're not going to have enough flares to to shoot out. Um, so I thought that was an interesting little addition to the game. Yeah, yeah. And like, it, it's weird because like in any other Call of Duty game, it would have felt like, oh, you play the first section as like the AC-130 and then like that second part, you would play it on the ground and you just have like a target designator. Whereas like, I was kind of expecting that. Whereas like, actually, oh, you're just in the AC-130 again? It was kind of like, oh, that's kind of weird. Yeah, can I can I do something else? Can I be in a jet? Like, give me another airplane to be in. Let, let me do, like, a, like, 40 metric ton uh, orbital bomb, you know, a kinetic bomb, you know. Exactly. Let me send down some rods from God, man. <laughs> Connect to God's uh, Wi-Fi. Although, yeah, although, isn't that, I, I imagine that would be in, like, the Advanced Warfare or whatever the um, the space missions I'm were. I'm pretty sure that is actually a plot line in one of those games. All right, good. Good, I'm glad that we still have, you know, connect bombs happening. All right, uh, so we've got we've got all of that, um, and that and that's it for your air. Um, if you wanted to be in a, um, uh, in a, in a airplane again, you're, you're hosed after that. And we have uh, Recon by Fire, which, fuck, I hated this level so much. Uh, what did you think about this one? Which one was this one again? This is the one. So uh, this is the one where you have to like hide and let enemies pass by you. Oh yeah, this was kind of like their attempt to do like all gillied up. Uh, like it, I thought it was okay. I felt like having to you know change position so you can like get two guys at once with one shot was a bit annoying considering like how the like massive different like distance and angles you have to get. It was okay. It it just made me want to play Call of Duty Four again. I don't I don't like sneaky missions. I don't like having to sneak around stuff. Um, well, you picked the right not, fucking game because it's not like there's yeah, twenty of them in this. So much like pretty much after uh, after the um, the C one thirty, you're just sneaking constantly, and it was so fucking annoying. Um, so yeah, I hated I hated this level, and it just kind of feeds into all the other levels. Uh, although I believe violence and timing was uh, was kind of fun. Um, this is the one where you're where you're driving to get to the front of the convoy to get Laswell. Yeah, that that was fun. Um, I but like weirdly, I felt it didn't go fast enough. I felt like the cars were moving at a speed where I was like, I just wish these could go faster. Like it didn't feel like kinetic enough it didn't feel like it moved it was just like okay i'm holding down the trigger and i'm moving as fast as i can now i need to jump to this car now i need to jump to this car it didn't feel like there was a whole lot of stakes to it that that is fair and i would agree with you except that this is the one this is the level that like i had i had to stop playing and and walk away from it because i couldn't i couldn't get past it and i think this is when i lowered my um my difficulty level to down to uh down to novice just because <laughs> you you were about to uh punch walls in that new pod shack 
Exactly. Um, you know, I'm just not good at uh, I'm, I'm not good at shooting in a video game. So uh, I'm not very good at shooting in real life either, uh, to be fair. But so the the moving back and forth and having to like drive, but also shoot um, was really annoying. But at least this was kind of different and new. Uh, it did get kind of samey, though. Uh, and even then they got the, I think that where, where I got hung up was uh, when you're driving up on the mine truck. And it's just because the the quick save that happened where, where you know the checkpoint that I was at would it would dump me back into the checkpoint and my my truck was crashing into something um, because that's when it checkpointed. So every time I always had to start with the truck that was like half fucked up because it ran into a wall and I'd have to jump onto another um, vehicle to keep going and then it was a whole thing. I was very happy when I got to the next checkpoint after the mine car because holy fucking shit that uh, that game was 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 giving me some problems. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, then we have El Sin Nombre. Uh, this is when you have to, <laughs> the game is survive an interrogation. Um, you give yourself up uh, to to go in and to find where El Sin Nombre is. Uh, it turns out they are there. Um, and the the twist is that it's the, the woman who you meet in the beginning. Uh, but I kind of figured that was El Sin Nombre from the beginning. Like, that's yeah. not, that wasn't much of a twist uh, to me. It was just, but, you know, like, I feel like most of the people who probably play something like this, you know, all the, the weird groipers and, and whatnot, would just be like a woman. Um, <laughs> but it was just very, it was very, it was very telegraphed. Yeah. Um, neckbeards found rotting. Like, once again, like this mission, it was fun. It was obviously meant to be like aping like a Hitman mission, but also it just made me want to play Hitman. This game reminds me of a lot of better games than it. Yeah. Like it, there's like shades of like Hitman, The Last of Us. Like, uh, the writing is, like, it kind of is in tandem with, like, how there hasn't really been, like, many good army or military or kind of, like, action movies in the past, maybe, like, seven years. And it's kind of reflected in the writing of this game as well, because it's, like, taking inspiration from, like, movies from the past ten years, but there haven't been any good, you know, action movies either. No, there haven't. I mean, the, like the closest you can do is like maybe John Wick, but it's you're not. This isn't John Wick, and I'm surprised they haven't made a John Wick video game. Have they made a John Wick? Video uh, game? They did John Wick Hex. I never played it. I got loads of ads for it because I do like those movies. But yeah, just like trying trying to be Hitman. Like it, it, this mission was fun because when it's stuff like this, you know, I just kind of like wandered around and like eavesdropped on conversations that people were having and like. There's like at the head of the Mexican army and like the mayor of Mexico City, I think, or the president. And like they're making a deal about, you know, the head of the army supporting the president slash mayor to get reelected and stuff like that. And he's like, oh, you know, all this just for one more term and just like, you know, interesting kind of like set dressing. But, you know, at the end of a very predictable outcome. I did. I did like all of the little side conversations. It's um, uh, and I know that there's been kind of being added into games. I, the first time I came across it was in a Star Wars game, and I can't remember which one. Um, it may have been one of the Jedi Knight games where, like, you could be sneaking around, and then if you just come up, like, okay, you got to jump through this, you know, vent, uh, and bust down and kill those stormtroopers. But if you just sit, you just hear the stormtroopers bullshitting with each other. Uh, which you had a lot of, like, you know, it's a good addition. A lot of times when you just stand and watch with another guy, you're just talking about nothing because, you know, you can't be staring at your phone. You can't be reading a book, playing video games. You just got to stare off into the middle distance and hope nobody, you know, shoots you from a kilometer away or something. <laughs> exactly. All right. So then we have Dark Water, which is uh, raiding a, um, uh, 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 an oil rig to find one of the missiles. Uh, you find the missile, but the control panel has been like the controls have been ripped out of it and put onto another ship. Uh, so you have to go to the other ship and destroy. You know, you do. Basically, the thing is, is you use the the missile is going to launch regardless. So you have to change it. So it just turns back down and blows up the oil rig. Yeah, like the, this this mission, like was probably the first bit of like actual fun I had in maybe like in the past like hour, hour and a half playing this game. like. Because this is, it, it's, oh, is it called Wet Work in Call of Duty 4? It's literally the first mission in Call of Duty 4 on a shipping container. And it's like, 
the they've updated it now because obviously they've more computing power and like the actual containers on the ship are like moving based on the pitch of the ship and it's like it is quite cool and it's quite fun you know um but yeah like i you know this was kind of the first time where i was like oh this is actually really fun yeah it was you know you're dodging the, the crates it's it's dark so um you know you don't have great visibility uh the whole ship is moving back and forth so it does it it added a layer to the normal run around and shoot people thing, um, which which was nice. Yeah, like you said, it was fun. This was a fun level to to kind of run through. You've got your your close combat stuff. You've got your long, you know, uh, middle distance kind of combat stuff, uh, moving shipping containers, all kinds of things. Good times. All right. Then we have then we have alone, uh, which is where you this is after you get betrayed by graves uh, and the shadow company is looking for you because you run away, uh, you escape and you're playing gas this time. And you have to, this one, Jesus, this fucking level. I hated this level so much. Like every part of this level was just a, a, a fucking knife in my, in, in my side, uh, the having to go around and find, uh, things so you can build tools, the, uh, finding shitty guns so that you could like maybe get a couple of shots off. I know it's a very survival game and I know people like it. I understand why they put it in there. It is just not for me. And I hated this level. Yeah. Like I, I thought this was interesting. You know, this is like very heavily inspired by the last of us, particularly like the last of us Two, where you're kind of like you're scavenging, you're making like makesh- makeshift tools. Um, actually this is, you're playing soap. Uh, Johnny Soap McTavish, a uh, returning hero from the original series. Um, and like, yeah, like it's fun. There's kind of like a bit of back and forth between him and Ghost. Um, yeah, like I, I thought that it was interesting. The level was just way too long. Like, it, it, if it was maybe like twenty percent shorter, I feel like it could have been really tight and really fun. Yeah, but but constantly making me um built uh, especially when like all the dudes with the uh the armor come out so they're harder to kill and it's like no make a bunch of like bombs or something like i don't want to do that i just want to shoot them like i normally do but i just ran past all of them yeah i eventually i learned that you could just run past them and still get the thing and it's like okay this is fine then then price the, or then ghost comes down and helps you uh okay so we have uh after that we have prison break um which was an interesting kind of uh uh, level. This is the one where you're using the cameras to to guide Ghost along to to kill people. Yeah, um, kind of. It's kind of like the original Metal Gear Solid in in, in a way. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and and this this epi- this one was like the perfect amount of length, of length, right? Like you you bust Alejandro out, you do this thing to uh you know guide Ghost or, Ghost around to kill people. Um, I got I got stuck in a couple spots, but eventually you know got it figured out and. Uh yeah, this this is fun. Yeah, um, this is this is where I got stuck in the progression loop because I think it's maybe on the third uh place you need to plant the bomb. I like shot I knifed a guy and then was in a section of cover that like every time it reloaded, I had like maybe a half a second window to kill two guys before I got shot and then just had to reset. Yeah. Yeah, the I think is that the one where um not the the first power outage diversion but the second one yeah yeah the second one yeah that's that's where i got hung up to um <laughs> and, it's, and, and not not because of a loop thing but once i do the diversion those two those two guards that come out like i was the timing was thrown off for me because i'd be like okay i can if i hit the knife kill now uh he will be he's behind these crates and the other guy won't see it but like you hit the knife kill, but it takes like three seconds for Ghost to get up there and do the knife kill, and then I just get shot. So I had to, I had to just get a little bit more bold with my with with telling Ghost to go out and do stuff, and I finally got through that one. Yeah, same, same. I ju- I just like literally, I was playing it last night, and I I think it took like twenty tries just to get like that perfect timing to get those two guards, and then then was able to progress. All right, then we have hindsight where we get to go back in time a little bit um, and get killed by Wagner Group. Apparently, um, I didn't really understand what the the point of this uh, this whole thing was. So this than- is this is like a setup for um, I can understand what they're trying to aim for, knowing what I know about the original series. Um, so one, it's that American PMCs are good, 
Russian PMCs are bad. Um, and two, that the Americans are giving missiles to anti-Russian allies and they get jumped by Russian PMCs or Russian soldiers and or then they give the missiles to the Iranians and the Iranians try to blah 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 blah. You get the gist. Yeah, the 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 two the two boogeymen of America that we can put in video games because if we put if we made it China, then uh, China would stop buying our stuff. Also, funnily enough, uh, Call of Duty Online is insanely popular in China. It's a Chinese only Call of Duty, and it is insanely popular there. Huh. I might have to might have to uh, look into that one. Uh, okay, this is quick quick level. You die at the end of it, and uh, you learn nothing. Um, then we have Ghost uh, Ghost Team. Uh, this is the one where you're throwing smoke bombs oh, to yeah. Uh, to yeah, and that's fine. Whatever. Um, there's you get to do a little bit of a little bit of uh, um, spotting to get a, a helicopter to blow some stuff up. There is no, you know what? There is no real sniper mission in this game, um, which I I can I kind of feel it was lacking on. Like maybe maybe the one uh, where you know you're having to move. So that the guys can maybe that one's kind of sniperish, but I don't know. It just didn't really feel. It feels like I was cheated out of a really good sniper mission. Yeah, I think because like that, like lighthouse mission, there's really no stakes to you taking those sniper shots. You can take as long as you want to get in the perfect position, and you can just take the perfect shot and you can just take it over and over again. Whereas like in other ones, there's kind of like there's some timing to it. There's a little bit of skill, and like there's just not that in this game. Yeah, so uh, this one you get to um, you know point a, a spotter scope to get an Apache to blow stuff up, which is very fun. Uh, you're trying to get to Graves to kill Graves. This is when Graves gets into a tank and you have to uh, do the Mario thing where you have to hit him three times um, with uh, C4 before he dies, and and you and you you feel like like yes, we did it. We uh, we. Um, got our revenge against uh, the used car salesman of a PMC guy, which like makes me wonder like what's ha- what happens to, to his whole PMC now that he's now that he's down Does somebody else step up. I mean, he's just like the CEO, um, which I also thought was very strange that like, he's always very involved with like every mission that's going on. Like the, the dark water one he's getting on, he's getting onto the uh, oil platforms with you. It's like, you're basically Eric Prince. Shouldn't you be like schmoozing Saudis for like, you know, to, to buy tanks or something? Like, why are you here? Um, go away. Elon Musk is now on the ground with his uh, child soldiers. Like, exactly. You know, go do what you're supposed to do and be, you know, the, uh, the guy who pushes papers around. All right. Then we have countdown, uh, which is the, uh, uh, you get to go to Chicago, uh, shout out to the Midwest, finally getting a little bit of representation in uh, call of duty. Uh, this is kind of the Nakatoma Plaza uh, level where you gotta go, you know, scale down a building and jump in and kill people uh, shooting through windows and whatnot. Um, and then, like, there's a really annoying mission uh, at the end of it where you have to um, get the controls for the missile because the missile is already launched and you're being chased around by a bunch of people, but you don't have a gun, so you have to hide. St- somewhere so this i was so fucking annoyed with this mission because like i ran around and like found corners there's actually a room in the center of that area that if you you can just crawl in through an air vent and like they can't get through the door and you can just literally do it there and not be interrupted and i only found it after i did that sequence with the uh disarm controls and then you go in and there's like shit loads of supplies so you can make a glass shank yeah, there's um, I've, I discovered that room by opening the door. Uh, and when I did that, all the other guys followed in and killed me. Um, I think I found like a, a closet on the outskirts somewhere where I could finally uh, sit down and, and do all of that. See, uh, Call, Call of Duty, much like being in the army, uh, is all about paperwork. Yeah, a lot of paperwork uh, is, is involved in this. Um, so then we have our final mission uh, where you run through and uh, you kill Hassan. Um, and everybody is, you know, feels happy and you, you get the, you go drink pints with, uh, Laswell and you learn that the bad guy is Kamarov, I guess. Oh, Makarov, Vladimir Makarov. Makarov, Yeah. 
which means that uh, I don't know if he was in the first in the 2019 one, but uh, bringing back all time great Imram Zakayev, uh, Vladimir Makarov, uh, owner of a great tracksuit in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> um, yeah, they're like, I have some fu- classic Makbas. Yeah, I fully uh, am prepared for where the third installment is going to go. Well, um, there was, did you see the post credit scene? Uh, no. Okay, so during the post credit scene, and I didn't see it either, so I'm just reading this from IGN. Uh, it says, during the post credit scene, we see a man assembling a pistol uh, while he waits to get off a plane. As he's about to get up, he gets a message with the final instruction, no Russian. Ooh, I wonder what's going to happen. Do we get to mow down some more um, some more people? I mean, I, 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 as you are a uh, noted uh, civilian killing enthusiast, I'm sure you're happy. But like, the, like that level's not going to have the same shock. The reason that no Russian was so, so shocking in 2009 is because no one had ever done anything like that. Like, I know that around the same time someone was trying to produce like a, a Fall of Fallujah game, which is weirdly back in development now. Six days in Fallujah. No, that that was that was one where they're like, "Yes, we're going to create it again." Here's a screenshot, and it's like, "This is just to make to get clout on Twitter, man." You're not actually making this game, um, so I'm not concerned about that one. Yeah, like I I just don't know. Like you you can't do the same thing thing twice, and I don't think that like no Russian is going to have the same impact because like you have to think of like the time it came out. Like it was kind of very very early like post bush era you know like 9 11 was still like in the forefront of people's minds like the majority of people who are going to play this game in like three years time were probably four years out from being born when 9 11 happened (laughs) right um but hey that just means there's a whole new generation of uh people to mow down a bunch of russians inside of a uh inside of an airport although because this is a pistol and not a um and not like a light machine gun which everybody gets in the uh in in the original no russian maybe it's going to be a little bit different maybe a little bit more clandestine um i would here's what i would love i would love call of duty to try and pull off like something like this and then the TSA has to get involved. Uh, do, does uh, ACAB include the TSA? They don't carry guns themselves, so I don't really know how it would. Uh, so yeah, but they and, make and they make God it for they it make too, you man. take off your shoes. Luckily, I have an incredibly valuable passport. I have an Irish passport, so I get like no hassle. Like, well, weirdly, I get a lot of hassle flying back from London if I'm going home. Uh, I've been like bomb checked loads of times i've gotten chemical swabs on my bags i always have to take off my shoes and do like the full body scan maybe it's because i'm covered in tattoos i don't know maybe it's the passport but like going anywhere in europe is like super easy i one time had to do the uh the chemical swab uh while i was coming i i they chemically swabbed um my military camera bag which was very obviously a military camera bag because i was in my military uniform and it was a camouflage like you know kind of camera bag yeah, yeah uh and they did they did the thing they're like there's explosive material on uh that that's coming up i'm like yeah man i'm in the army guess what we fucking do like what do you think <laughs> i would take pictures of explosions and shooting stuff that's that's what i do i like to do that stuff the tsa also, does not respect the troops right it's like hey don't this is america um if i want to have explosives and if i want to blow some stuff up to like reveal genders i can do that and you can't stop me just go like a full uh was it navy seal sniper copy pasta on their ass exactly um what the fuck did you just say to me you little tsa bitch <laughs> i was gonna ask tom do you do you uh recommend this for people um if you're just gonna play the campaign like honestly figure out how you can pirate it just play it for free if you <laughs> if it goes on sale in maybe like a year get it if you're just gonna play the campaign or just buy the original call of duty one and modern warfare one and two which are arguably better games you can get them for like 20 quid or you could pirate them um if you're gonna play the multiplayer and play warzone 2.0 when it comes out yeah get it why not it's like eight hours you can play on like a saturday if you're 
have like a free day off or whatever. It's fun. It's stupid as shit. Um, but yeah, just play it. It's, it's like it's like every other multiplayer you've ever played in Call of Duty. It's the exact same thing. Although the um the addition of larger teams, uh, rather than just like the six man kind of uh you know six on six, uh the ground war thing, I really like that. Uh, I've always the thing that I didn't like about Call of Duty games uh, multiplayer was that you know I wanted something bigger like what Battlefield offered, uh, but Ground War kind of mixes the two down where it's like, okay, yes, you can have more people, you can have some vehicles, but your helicopter doesn't actually shoot stuff. It's just to people can get into it and jump out and capture these things or uh, this armor personnel carrier. Whoever's driving it has the main gun, but nobody else can like lean out and shoot. There's no other guns or anything. You just sit there and get out when you want to get out. Uh, and there's tanks too uh, on occasion. But so I, I appreciate that they found like a decent middle ground that I enjoyed because I'm in Battlefield. I was always terrible with any of the um, you know the flight stuff, helicopters, j- airplanes, absolute dog shit, and with all of that, no no good whatsoever. So um, I. I I enjoyed I enjoyed that part, and I will probably keep playing some some multiplayer. But uh, uh, we'll see. I also might just fall back into Titanfall. So. Yeah, like the thing I will say is, Call of Duty is kind of like a Big Mac. A Big Mac tastes the same regardless of where you get it, and every tastes the exact same as every other Big Mac you've ever eaten. This Call of Duty is a lot like a Big Mac. It is exactly the same as every other Call of Duty. Plays the same, and you will probably have the exact same experience. You might have some Big Macs that are slightly better or slightly worse than others, but it's still a Big Mac and it's still Call of Duty. Yeah, I'm enjoying it because I haven't played a Call of Duty multiplayer in many years. I, you know, I have Xbox Game Pass, so I play Titanfall. I play uh, Battlefield 5 um, multiplayer stuff there. But Call of Duty was always, you know, it's it's always been kind of its own thing. So I enjoy it, but also I've been lacking in this. So if you've played any of the other ones, I don't know. Um this is I, I know that like sometimes you kind of have to keep up with whatever the the latest games are because, you know, the other ones kind of start falling off. Uh, people people play them less. There's more cheats. There's less regulation. Um, and just, you know, it it, it falls behind uh, because the, the latest and greatest is here and they want you on that one. So um, I, had, I had fun with it. I don't regret it. Um, you know, I got to I got to play a game and I got to make a podcast out of it. So and, and that's a that is a viable form of income in the year of our Lord 2002 or 2022 these days. So, yeah, somehow I'm going to have to somehow I'm going to have to explain me buying Call of Duty as a taxable expense to my accountant in April. But yeah, bro. My my ta- my accountant um and and me with the podcast and with my my wife's side job it's just there's a reason why it costs me four hundred dollars to have my taxes done every year and thank <laughs> God for it because it's confusing as fuck because we are an insane country full of insane people who hate other people. I do my own taxes because they're easy to do in the UK. Yeah, it's just here. What do you want? Give us this amount of money. You made this. You brought this much money in. Give us your receipts, uh, and then we'll give you this much money back. Sounds it sounds so easy. Well, the problem is that when you make income like this, the government isn't like taking the money out automatically. Like you know, when you have um, a podcast that brings in Patreon money, uh, the the government isn't withholding stuff as they do at my normal job on a regular basis. So I got to pay quarterly taxes, love to send the government a thousand dollars of my money a month. Like the only starting a small business almost made me um, a libertarian. Uh, but I, I, I moved back over and I was like, look, it's fine. It's fine. The reason I pay taxes, it's okay. But oh, damn it, there's a lot of money that I got to give them. Just move to Ireland. You'll never have to pay tax again. I look, man, it is, it is tempting. Um, you have so many rolling, rolling green Hills, uh, so many sheep. Um, I enjoy sheep. They're very nice. Uh, what else do you guys have there? Absolutely. Fuck all else. We have Apple, Google, Facebook, Twitter, all of the posting tools are in Dublin. We have no houses. We have no jobs. Hence why I live in London. Well, that's that's fine. You, uh, we'll go back. We'll like make our um a house out of rocks or something. Like, there's not that many cities. Like, certainly we can go out in the middle of a field somewhere and like build a house, right? Build build a pot, build the Irish pod shack. You do not understand how expensive it is to buy land in Ireland. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's insane. It is 
absolutely insane. Well, it can't be any worse than America. Or maybe it can. I really don't fucking know. It's bad everywhere. Um, sorry if you're trying to buy a house these days. All right, Tom, we've talked about Call of Duty for like an hour and a half. Um, is there anything else you wanted to talk about with uh, with, with this nonsense? Uh, n- not really. Like, it, it just has like weird politics. Like, absolutely insane kind of like it, like one thing that I wanted to bring up that like is like weird cognitive dissonance is that like obviously a lot of the kind of scripts are vetted by the Department of Defense and like the lines about uh from El Sinombre where she says you know oh if there's a war on terror there's no war on drugs and it's like it's really fucking weird to hear like this in a Call of Duty game because like I am sure there are hundreds of like guys sitting in offices in various like offsites from the Pentagon who like have to stamp this shit. It's a reason why like the M4 and the M16 are like some of the few actually licensed guns in this game. Um, obviously like uh, the AK 70, uh, 74U and AK 47 aren't called that because obviously you have to pay for licensing for to have that stuff in your game, but like. Yeah, it's just like really weird on like how it like treats um like Central Americans in Mexico is just like really weird. Um yeah, just like weird vibes. It's it's fun. Just don't think about it. Yeah, there's no you can't make a modern game. Like you can go back to World War II and be like, we're gonna go kill Nazis and we're not gonna talk about anything else other than killing Nazis. And we're gonna make a game that everybody feels good because you killed Nazis. And sure, we killed Nazis, it's great. Um but you can't make a modern warfare game, like whether it's the Blops, whether it's the um, Cold War, whether it's uh, Infinity War, like politics today, like we know too much about them and they're too they're too complicated. Um, you know, like we've we've pretty much boiled World War down World War Two down to Nazis bad shoot Nazis in the face. Obviously, there is a lot more politics and a lot more information, a lot more like, you know, there's a lot more to it than just Nazis bad. I mean, certainly Nazis bad. Yes. But also America wasn't that great. Soviet union flip flopping, you know, we could get into a lot of different things. Um, but you know, these days you, you're not going to be able to create a game like uh, a, a first person shooter that people are enjoying. Like either you can make it up completely and just be like, we're not even going to talk about like the United States isn't even in this game. We're just going to make up all countries. We're going to go to back to Pangea and just make it just one big thing. We're, we're going to use the game of Thrones map, but with guns or something, you know, like you can do something like that maybe, but to, to try to make a modern game, a modern first person shooter with all these kinds of trappings in it, you're always going to have to in, inject some kind of politics into it and the politics are always going to be bad like no matter what even if it's just like yes we're we're doing something to stop missiles and if that's all you look at it as you know the shoot hassan because missiles bad is nazis bad um but there's a lot more politics to it that get really a lot more confusing unnecessary un- unnecessary in a lot of ways and uh but like you said just don't think too much about it it's a fucking video game who gives a shit Pay seventy dollars, you hogs. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, if you want to hear more about how Nazis bad, but also Nazis complicated, you should listen to my show. Yeah, you should uh, definitely be uh, catching up with with Tom. Um, we're, I'm sure Thirty Third County is going to be spinning off into its own thing uh, fairly soon. We've been uh, uh, putting putting it up on our uh, Patreon. So uh, if you're not a member of the Patreon and you want to hear more of Tom uh, and Carrie, if you if like the 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 dual love of an Irish accent and a Boston accent fucking clashing together is just something that, uh, that, that you have real asthma for, uh, $5 a month, baby. We got that for you. Um, I don't know. Maybe I can convince Tom to put up some feet pictures later. Um, if that's what you're into, um, we'll, we'll, however you want to give us some money, man, we'll take it. Um, but, uh, yeah, pimp, pimp your, uh, other podcasts again. So, uh, I host another show called beneath the skin. It's the, History of everything told through the history of tattooing. Me and my co-host, Dr. Matt Lauder. Um, Matt is a art historian and a tattoo historian. We are going through like how tattooing interweaves with like the history of everything. We've done uh, episodes about indigenous Greenlandic tattooing. We've covered recently the weird history of tattooing on the far right. 
we are watching along with the latest uh, series of Ink Master. And yeah, we have an episode coming out soon about tattooing in the Middle Ages. And we've done like um, tattooing in the New World, tattooing a religion, loads of that sort of stuff. It's, ma- it's a history show where tattooing is the medium to talk about other stuff. Exactly. Now, let me let me ask you something. Um, because you're you're younger, you're closer, you're, you're Gen Zer. Um, is tattooing still like big among younger people? Like, I got my first tattoo at like on my 18th birthday, like when I legally could go in and get one. Um, and it seems like a lot of people my age, uh, a lot of millennials have them. But I don't know. It's because I know I know Gen Z doesn't have sex. They don't drink, so I assume that they're not getting tattoos either. Uh, they are and they aren't. Um, tattooing among younger people is very different in a way than, say, maybe people your age and like pe- people kind of around my age as well. Um, either people are getting like a lot of tattoos, like they're getting completely covered in like tattoos that they don't really care what they look like. It's more so that they want to be seen to be visibly very heavy, heavily tattooed. But also there is like reinterpretation of a lot of styles like um 90s tribal tattooing is come back come back Ugh, in like no. a huge way no. but it's like no. it's like what if tribal mullets are coming back too what the fuck oh man? mullets are mullets have already come back and gone out francis not around not around in my fucking neighborhood not not a, not in st louis but yeah like um yeah like stuff like neo tribal is cool again um yeah it's it's an interesting time and like there's m- there's so many more fantastic artists out there and there's so many incredible young artists out there who are like really in like the early parts of their career and already so are already so talented. Like I got a new tattoo last weekend from one of them. Um, and yeah, listen, listen to my show. If you want to hear me talk uh, more about that stuff. Mm, I want to get a new tattoo. It's been a while. It's, I haven't, I haven't gotten inked since I got back from my last deployment and that was, 2010 so but also it's it's just i don't know like i don't know what i want inked on my body permanently anymore like even the even the tattoos i have i'm like wow that was fucking stupid whatever yeah but they're they're stupid for a point and we actually have a patreon goal on our own show when we reach 100 patrons i'm gonna get i'm gonna put up like four designs on the patreon and let everyone vote on which one i should get and i'll whichever one gets the most votes i'll get it so uh, if you check out my show and like it, subscribe to the Patreon. Yeah, my my embarrassing ones is um, I am Irish, but like in that like American mongrel kind of way, like my family is from Missouri, so we're not that Irish. But, you know, like if you go back uh, enough time uh, in 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 the past, you know, we've got people who came over in the 1900s and people who came over during the famine and 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 whatever. And uh, but I, uh, I have. um life and death in Gaelic tattooed on me, uh, <laughs> on, on my arms. Yes. Yes. Very embarrassing. Um, here's the thing. So the life and death, like, and it's got, I've got armbands too. One of them is all green branches and then it's got a cross. And then the other side is an armband of dead branches with an inverted cross because at the age of 20, I was very deep. I was a very deep thinker. And then I got life and death in Gaelic tattooed over them because I wanted everybody to know how deep of a thinker I was. So, um, that's why all of my tattoos are covered up with a t-shirt too. So, um, thankfully I was smart. I was that smart to, uh, hide my embarrassment 20 years, 20 years later. I mean, at least you had the foresight for that. Yeah. Um, I, I, and I don't remember why I think I was mostly, I was trying to hide them from my parents, but, um, Tom, thank you for coming on. Uh, this is probably the longest, uh, hell of a way to die episode that we have done, uh, to date. I am sweating in the fucking pod shack. So I need to go out and get some fresh air and, uh, uh, pick up a door from a hardware store um, because that's what that's the shit you do when you're 40 years old, man. <laughs> uh, thank you everybody for listening. Um, join the pod, uh, join the, the Patreon, join Tom's Patreon. We're going to have all the links and everything down in the show notes. Uh, and thank you so much for listening and we'll talk to you next week. Zoom, zoom, zoom.